So, I was thinking about the Enlightenment in the view of nature. I talked before about the uh, mechanistic view of nature, which Bauer that has talked about before. Um, and that does, in large part, come to us from the Enlightenment. But um, that, at first glance, it would suggest that nature was kind of uh, subdued in, in the Enlightenment, thinking that it didn't play in them, that they, they thought it was unimportant or, or a resource to be exploited, which isn't quite true. Um, nature actually played a very important role in Enlightenment thinking. Uh, you know, Isaac Newton was um, not just a scientist, he was also a theologian. And um, in his view, these laws, these physical laws that he was describing, were part of some divine established harmony. God had ordained that the universe would, would run in this in this manner uh, through, through these inviolable laws uh, that would that would ensure uh, you know the uh, the ensure the, they had had all these this, these harmonious properties. And um, now now Newton was a Christian, but that but that kind of uh, theological movement of his uh, led to the establishment of deism. Yeah, and the idea of deism is that you know God establishes harmony, and and they went beyond just um, you know just the physical laws, the, the laws of physics we know, but also it is that there were also moral laws that uh, they were established. And if you wanted to create a, a proper society, you would create one that's, that's in accordance with these laws. Um, and so that led to a lot of Enlightenment thinking, you know, a lot of. The political philosophy in Enlightenment appealed to this idea of a state of nature. You know, John Locke talked about how, in a, in a, how radically free people are in a state of nature where they, you know, there is no society and everyone is just an individual free to his own devices. Uh, you know, Rousseau said, man is born free but everywhere was in chains. Um, of course, this is a naive view of nature. As David Hume later pointed out, um, the state of nature the state of nature they talk about is not actually the way that uh, people naturally live. People naturally live in society, and I, and I think yeah, that that's where the the whole enlightenment thinking goes wrong. Is that uh, it's so individualistic that in, in a sense there was this it, it was a necessary step because there was a kind of the kind of individuation was, uh, that went on in the enlightenment was sort of a necessary step away from the sort of oppressive hierarchies that existed uh, in the, the sort of medieval world and um, breaking away from authorities of church and state and trying to establish their own. But, you know, it's still an, a naive position um, because the state of nature for humans is to be in a society and individuation ha actually happens within that society. But in any case, you know, I mean, the idea of, of a natural order um, was basically how, how um, that was how, that was how the enlightenment, uh, that, was, that was the role that nature played for the enlightenment. And so it was a significant part of their thinking. Um, and I think it's actually reflected in something that, uh, that the zeitgeist movement said, where they said nature, they said nature is a dictatorship, we have to follow, follow by her roles. And basically, you know, that's, a modern a sort of modern version of that whereas you know I think that from a process relational view uh, white heading view we can, we can see nature not as you know a set of laws we have to obey but more something we cooperate with we negotiate with nature there's there's a give and take um, we are of course we are of course natural so it's not that uh, so I mean I mean there, there's this, there's one sense in which you know, we are nature, and anything we do is natural. And then there's another sense in which, well, we also are emergent from nature, and, and we have to, and 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 uh, embedded in an, an environment where we have to you know, give and take. So, in any case, yeah, I, I I think that it'd be interesting to kind of go back to the Enlightenment political philosophies that appealed to a state of nature, and try to reconstruct a political philosophy based on a more accurate understanding of nature. Anyway, that's my thoughts for now. Peace.